Oh, well, good he evening. Gets... Yeah, he does. Good evening, dear listener. Sorry, I interjected there, Chris. Um, we've missed the go- the uh, the music at the beginning. Um, we've been getting a lot of good comments from uh, the podcast of last weekend's game, but we are here for tonight's game between Ear of Town FC and Tunbridge Wells. Tell you what, you don't get a game for ages, and then like buses, they all seem to come at once. And another one Saturday as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's nice to be back on the pod. So, evening, dear listener. I was uh, kicked off on Saturday because we had royalty, and I've been promoted again. So, yeah, we're here for the Tunbridge Wells game, and uh, I think bounce back is the word tonight, bounce, isn't it? Bounce back ability. I think that was a word that um, was created on Soccer AM that then made the dictionary. Oh. But I can uh, I can see the Dockers going. This is very confident. There's no reason why they shouldn't. It was a very, very disappointing result against... Uh, a Faversham, but a very good performance. Yeah, it was a, I think it was a really good performance. I think they performed well. I think they deserved to get something out of it. A draw would have been fair, but you can't take anything away as a really good strike at the end. And we come off uh, with the defeat. But as we say, we're going to bounce back tonight. We're hoping and uh, putting a good performance and uh, hopefully lots of goals. Lovely stuff. And here we have the uh, the playlist king. Watcher. Watcher indeed. We had a very nice lunch. I did. I had a fabulous lunch, uh, courtesy of uh, Quillens. Yes. While I was having my uh, little hummus and uh, falafel, you was getting a wine and dined. I was having an Indian feast, uh, courtesy of uh, my work, (laughs) which is very nice. Um, Other um, cultural feasts are available. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But again, we go into this one um, a little bit disappointed, but still, still confident. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you know, it was uh, it was a blow on Saturday. There's no two ways about it. Everybody was really downhearted about it. Not just the fact that we lost, because we lost to a really good team, but it was the manner of the losing right at the death, where you know, there's nothing you can do to come back from it. But you know, um, we should do well tonight. Um, we are uh, comfortably ahead of them in terms of league positioning. I think we're a stronger team, um, and uh, and I'm, I'm, I feel I feel that we'll bounce back quite quite easily. Absolutely, so, absolutely. And, that's, if, and that's, uh, whoever that is on the floor gets up. Harrison Carnegie. Uh, How'd you get to Carnegie? Hall? You've got to practice. Well, you've got to get off the floor first. Well, yeah, that's true. Absolutely. But as always, we'll check in with things. We we are near the Mackenzie Foley fan club section. Um, they're not paying much attention to us this this week. How are we doing on the halftime playlist? Well, we're doing very well at the moment. We've choosed, cho- choose? Choose? That's not choose? Even a word. We've chosen movie themes and TV themes, Chris, this week. So uh, we will be getting that together soon. And if you do hear um, the Godfather theme tune for whatever reason, straight after Red Dwarf, <laughs> you lot picked it. <laughs> nil nil. <laughs> Mistake from the Tunbridge Wells goalkeeper there. Saw Harry Taylor win the ball on the right and play it back inside to Dyer. Dyer now gets the ball, plays it out wide to Tom Ash, who's in the right back position. Dribbles into the midfield, plays nice. it inside to Ladic. It was nice. Well said, Chris. I agree. Who now plays it back outside to Harrison Carnegie. Nice little step Ian over there. Well, step over cross, cross comes cross. in. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, header from Tom Ash. He's pushed over the bar there by the Tunbridge Wells goalkeeper. That's 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 a moment of class there. And I'm and and I'm glad I started recording. This is expertise podcasting, if you will. <laughs> Except that that was Harry Taylor, not Tom Ash. Who did I say? He made the header. I said Tom Ash. Did I? Wrong one. Anyway. (laughs) Corner now on the right-hand side, about to come in by James Dyer with a left foot swung in. Four on the six-yard box for uh, Tunbridge Wells. Heads it clear. Heads it clear again. They're asking for the referee to come on for some reason. I think they're starting to fight. But uh, no, a ball comes in and it's clear by the Tunbridge Wells team there. Good couple of moments there by Irvtan, but nice. got in the woods. But I'll be, I'll be honest with you, when uh, the goalkeeper's completely lost the ball there and uh, yeah. Harry uh, Taylor, yeah. Harry, Harry Taylor, Harry Taylor was, went round the goalkeeper. It was good of him not to go over. Yes, at that point, because he could quite easily have gone over yeah. and claimed that it was a push. But I think we should have done more from there. But yeah, we should have made more of it. But you know, there you go. These things happen. It was unfortunate, but it remains nil nil. But the first real chance of the goes to Irvtan. We just saw some angry diets there as James Dyer is tripped up. You could just see the anger, the steam coming off his head. Yeah, he's, he's, near, the, he's near the front again so he can get over that barrier. The female diets dropped her phone again. Anyway, free kick on the left-hand side being taken by Teddy Green. Lofted into the box from the halfway line towards Tom Ash. Tom Ash headers it, flicks it towards Harrison Carnegie, but it's cleared. Oh, good block there by Harrison Carnegie. It's, um, it's been a bit of a subdued opening 18 minutes, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, I thought the first minute or so they tried to play the ball into the box. We've had the one chance with, what, Harry Taylor from a good cross, but I would say the last sort of five minutes is a bit 
long ball from both teams really not much dire um, <clears throat> I don't really know what to say it's one of those that is very much you need to get the ball down on the floor at the moment we have head tennis well to be fair Rob has just been making the playlist for half time so it shows the excitement <laughs> in the game isn't that right Rob absolutely um, yeah. I'm oh, looking at this with absolute horror as I put some of these in here but you know hey the poll is what the poll is you can't absolutely. argue with what the people want no exactly exactly it was good tackle by Tom Ash and now dribbles into the box really plays it out wide Harrison Carnegie on the right hand side he tries to get across in and wins another corner Tom Ash has had a really good start for me so far he's playing very well the boy. Yeah, I think uh the, the positive things here have done all come from Tom Ash so far. The inside scoop, he said to me in the other week that he doesn't like running with the ball, Tom Ash. And I the said score. to him, I would keep doing it. The score is currently 0-0. How and are you? And it's 0-0. 0-0, thank you, mate. 0-0. Nil, 0-0, nil. Nil, nil. yeah, thanks, yeah. Repeating it makes it even more exciting. Yeah, I know, so. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hope we score. Corner comes in from right side by James Dye. Heading yeah. in. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic... Corner comes in. Corner comes in. Who scored? Who's the fault then? Who scored? George Harry Goodwin. Taylor. Harry Taylor. Was it, was it George? Was it George? It was George Goodwin. Yeah. Yeah. I was just. Hang on, let's have a listen. George Goodwin. Who scored? George Goodwin. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Harry Taylor. I thought it was Harry Taylor. Why do they look alike? Yeah, it says here you got. Do you know that you, it was a good header? Great uh, header! A corner coming from the right hand side, whipped in, and George Goodwin met in here. 1 0 here of town. 1 0. 1 0. Do you know the bit that really made it for me yeah, there with that? Oh, Dyer's about to have a shot, but he gets intercepted by the Tunbridge Wells, Wells midfield. Do you know the bit that really made that moment for me there, Rob? Rob was as the ball hit the back of the net and you started dancing. Woody looked up and shook his head at your moves. <laughs> well, so, 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 so anyone would really. To I have be to. Fair. I have to say, the resemblance between Adam Woodward and Craig Revel Hallward <laughs> is is ridiculous. Uncanny. It's, it's uncanny. It is like who was the other one? The the Italian fella. I have absolutely no idea. Or Len Goodman. Let's call him Len Goodman. Who was the Italian fella from uh, Strictly Come Dancing? The judge. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. No, no. Bruno Tony only That's what he's called yeah, now. Sorry, Bruno Tony only Tony who? Yeah, Adam, Adam Tony only That's what he's going to be called from now on because of his critique at your dancing. I thought it was because of his hat. Yeah, because of, yeah, of his uh, <laughs> bad Santa hat. 1-0. Yeah. Do you know what? It's been a quiet couple of moments, so I'm going to take this opportunity to um, talk to... Uh, first, I'm going to talk to Chris, if you don't mind, Rob. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about, uh, about the youth and how that's going at the moment. Yeah, it's going really well. I think like uh, the soccer school Linewood is going really well. You know, we've got uh, loads of kids coming down every Saturday from ranges from four to eight. We have a session an uh, hour after, which is from eight to fourteen, pretty much. Oh my God! Oh, 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 what a goal! That? that is a Dyer moment of sheer class. A long, a long goal kick is played up the field. Yeah. Um, a long. <laughs> A long goal kick is played up the field by Mackenzie Foley. James Dyer does superbly to beat the offside trap, sees the goalkeeper off his line and curls it over his head. What a goal. Fantastic. I mean, what a lob. He meant every minute of that. And uh, wow, that was a great finish. And um, one thing, and one, do you know what? Adam Woodward there rightly applauses Mackenzie Foley because what a goal kick that was. He's got another assist. Do you know what I think will happen? I think that we'll tweet that it was an assist from Mackenzie. Then he will quote tweet that later on to say another assist. Because that tends to be the thing. But in this instance, Mackenzie, <laughs> fair play to you. See what happens when we keep the ball in. Only jesting. Two to Anyway, yeah, the kids are doing well, yeah, aren't they? They're doing really we'll talk well, about yeah, them later. Yeah, yeah, okay. Take two youth teams. Doing well. Let's go. Yeah, no, they're doing really well. I think we start, We talked about Limewood and we talked about soccer school getting good numbers down there. So any listeners, you've got someone from 4 to 14, come down to Limewood on a Saturday morning, 9 to 11. Things are going really well. You know, Tom's doing a great job with them. On to, uh, I don't like to talk about my own team, but, you know, on to the under 10s, you know, we're kind of 
almost unbeaten this season, um, going really well. But almost they're, unbeaten, they've lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've lost obviously then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're doing really well, they're progressing nicely and obviously I help with the under nines who are absolutely smashing uh, their division in the second half of the season. So they are unbeaten, they have won every game so far. So I think good manager. we can put the... <laughs> yes, Michael, good manager, you know, but between us we're doing both and yeah, no, no, they're both agree, progressing, you know, so... Um, we're really happy with the youth teams you know we get them down here supporting the first team and look there's a pathway for them hopefully into North Penn League and into the under 18s hopefully for a, that's what they've got to aspire to, to be haven't they Because so, yeah. yeah ultimately that's one good thing we were saying about Area of Town there is that you know there, there are these teams at these grassroots levels as we know we are, we are currently in the grassroots but you know there's no reason why these players can't develop and do really really well and like you say the progress these boys are making at the moment and girls because we're getting the girls at the Limewood as well and, and we had our very first game for the under 17 yeah, and they did. They did really well, didn't they? It was really good to see them come together. A lot of them have never played football, you know, six months ago. So if that, they've been to what six, three months, maybe six, seven sessions, and uh, they had their first game as the under sevens, and they gave a team that had been together a little longer a good, good run for their good money. Run for their money, shall yeah. we say? So yeah, they come off yeah. losing, but you know, weren't about it. It was just seeing the smiles on their face, and uh, yeah, it was really good. And this could, you know, almost uh, great ball over from uh, over to. Dyer and uh, almost a goal for if there as we're 2 0 up at the moment. Good segue from youth football into the match action, I like it. But of course, yeah. I can't forget our under 14s and under 15s who are doing very well in the A and B division, so the top two divisions of Sell Kent, respectively. And also, Mark Petters, who coaches about 19 teams. No, yes. I'm joking, he does the under 23s and the under 18s. The under 18s Kent Youth League team won at the weekend as well. So the future is looking bright for the youth teams. Would you agree, Rob? Fabulous. Well said. Corner from the left-hand side coming in now. Headed towards Harry Taylor. Who headers it and it's cleared off the goal line by a Tunbridge Wells there. And the follow-up header by Dyer is cleared. But yes, so the pathway scheme is going very, very well. We're getting a lot of interest in the areas and soon you'll be seeing more teams in the world-famous red and black of Ear of Town. Up the Dockers. 2-0. Anyway, right, need to have a conversation with. Oh, sorry. All oh, right, no, no, please. I'm, you know, I think the fans are intrigued now as well. What it was. Anyway, I've, we, there was a new thing that we've been doing as a club. Um, it's where you, not you personally, but you listener or person on social media, picks the playlist, and we've just had some bangers, movie and TV soundtrack. And you know what really made me smile as well was that um, a bit of Blues Brothers come on. Everybody needs somebody. And Adam Woodward and Alan Formwood stood near each other, and they were basically Eerith, Jake, and Elwood. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. All they needed was a pork pie each, or maybe even just a pork pie. They have the same emotional range as said Blues Brothers. Yeah, I would, I would give you that. What about vocal range? I'll tell you what, if we're listening now. Do you reckon they can do the dance? We need to find out a way of getting some kind of survey out or a petition. How many signatures to get Adam Woodward to shake his tail feather? <laughs> I reckon it would take a few. It, it would take a few. It would. Anyway, back for the second half we are here. So now um, Tunbridge Wells going from right to left. Ear of Town going in the opposite direction, left to right. And it was a very, very, very convincing first half from here. I don't think Mackenzie Foley had that much to... The only thing Mackenzie Foley had to do was that breathtaking assist. Wasn't that right? It was, uh, he, he, he sought out, sought out the front runners. Do you know what it reminded me of? You know when you see a kestrel hovering over a small rodent and he just knows when to pounce? She's not listening anymore, I ain't going to bother. Anyway, back to the first half. I'm nudging you, first half, how was it? Uh, yeah, no, it was great, it was a uh, dominant first half. Um, we were all over them like a cheap suit and, uh, and we got the rewards. Yeah. Uh, which was good. It's what you wanted. Um, I, uh, I, a I, nice, a nice way to bounce back after the disappointment of Saturday. Yeah. And um, it was just exactly what the doctor ordered. In truth, as well, without trying to be too, I told you so. I said before the game started, I said, I don't see why. And with no disrespect to Tunbridge Wells, but I can't see why this won't be like a four 0 or something. There's been no disrespect. That's every disrespect to Tunbridge Wells. No, but I mean, because because <laughs> we're that, that we are we're that good. There's a reason why they're sort of in the bottom 16th, half. 16th, I think. The, yeah, the bottom yeah. half of the table, and that is because uh, they don't have McKenzie. Foley. Yeah, and they're um, they're uh, they're, they're, incon- yeah, they're inconsistent. They don't have the players we've got. We sh- we should go into this very very confident based on the the league positions of the two teams, and uh, and thus it's so it's proved so yeah. far we have been the better side. Yeah. And, and it doesn't look like that's changing anytime soon. No, and it remains nil nil, and you've got another text. Yeah, looks like no, it, two nil. I try to be like Jim Kenny. 
as the song says. As, as the song says. I'm not singing on your podcast just yet. No. That will come after we win one of the cup finals that we're in. Yeah, we, we, were, just, we were just saying a moment ago, um, we had a bit of Blues Brothers, which you heard. Yeah, you heard the yeah, song, yeah. yeah. Um, bit of Shake Your Tail Feather. How yeah. many signatures to get Adam Woodward to shake his tail feather? Um, I'll tell you what now, mate. I'll tell you what. I tried, I tried to work, um, I worked with him. So I tried to make him shake his tail feather every single day at work, but he just don't have it. No. He just, it's just a little flirt. No, it is, it is. If he was a blues brother, would he be more Jake or Elwood? The short, fat oh, one? Oh, no, no, no. It, uh, <laughs> or it, the other one? It'd be Jake. It'd be Jake. I, I think Jake. Yeah, okay. Definitely. All right. So, but how are you? Are we liking the game so far, Jim Kenny? Oh, it's, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? There's a lot of football being played lately. So as much as we're on top, I think we look quite quite tired still so I think it's about conservative but at the moment there's only one team in it isn't there they're not very good oh for um, god's sake I'm going to have to edit that no out. you haven't got to edit that but what I mean we're not very good is in transition from defence to attack um, mm. as a unit very good right basically we've got to think 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 about what you're trying to do to me that's another Blues Brothers song <laughs> <laughs> Tony Aware of Town Raw High Raw High indeed <laughs> close in, moment there by a uh, with James Miles. A close moment there by, <laughs> by Tunbridge Wells. As um, a shot from the edge of the box just goes past Mackenzie Foley's box. We just had a little bit of a moment of madness there. Yeah, it all went a bit... Uh, it's suddenly, it was very dead and very flat. And all of a sudden, uh, it suddenly kind of just turned into a bit of madness. And uh, the ball started bobbling around. Oh, and Foley and there, there, a high deflected cross comes in oh. and Foley punches it clear. It lands to the Tunbridge Wells player in the C sharp box. No one's, gone to, oh. no one's gone to him exactly. He's managed to run to the edge of the box to get a shot away, but it's blocked. And um, who's that who's just done himself? Ollie Milton, who's just injured himself after he's just come on, has given the ball back to Tunbridge Wells. Tunbridge Wells player across goal and Foley claims brilliantly there. What, what a guy. What a guy indeed. I'm just uh, looking at Ollie Milton with a little bit of concern because he's only walked on a pitch and his very first action is just holding his back. Yeah. Uh, like we do in the morning when we yeah, get up. Especially when you're a man of a certain age, uh, yeah. as I am. But yeah, it's. Um, so yeah, it all went a bit mad there. And uh, they've had a little flurry of moments. And uh, they had a decent shot that they got away, but um, just wide of the post. Um, and. Uh, yeah, that, that pretty much sums up the half. Yeah, there's a, there's a very angry man. I, th- I, th- I think, I think, three, I think three, word, three letters sum up this half so far. M-E-H, meh. <laughs> meh. 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 Right. Yeah. It remains 2-0, 2 of two, 10. Chris, the king of positivity, is even struggling with this one. Klish. Klish. Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> How do you spell Chris? C-L-I-C-H-E. If you have any other variations, please email yeah, in- info at eraftown.com. Was it not... Klish, who said that 2-0 uh, is a dangerous scoreline. It was. <laughs> it was, yes. Klish indeed. They come out with why 2-0 is a dangerous don't scoreline. Don't rest on your laurels, is all I said. 2-0 is dangerous. Why, why, <laughs> yeah, why 2-0 is a dangerous scoreline? Because apparently the other team can score another one. <laughs> yeah. And explains what happens when the other team score another one. We're getting funny looks again from the Tunbridge Wells Massive. I need to keep the noise down. 2-0. The cliche king, the cliche king strikes. Tunbridge Wells have scored. Yeah. Well done, Chris. Sorry. Messi for putting the mockers on it. Yeah. Uh, just, it was coming, though, let's be honest. They, for, for I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily say it was coming, but they were the team who was pressing a bit more. I can't they're, they're, give you that. They were winning all the second balls. They were winning the battles in midfield. And although you could just see it coming, they were just starting to build a bit of momentum, a few crosses, you know, a few uh, shots on goal. And unfortunately, it's happened. And we're 2-1, and now this game is on. Yeah, it's a, it's a silly, soft corner to give away in the first place and then it's, a, it's, a, it's an unchallenged header six yards out Rob it is and uh, ridiculous really you should you know uh, giving away the corner was bad enough but uh, but it's a, just not defend it like that and we all just didn't watch the corner come in um, which is a dreadful way uh, to, yeah. to give away a goal and to join the cliche king here um, they've got a little bit of a spring in their step now haven't they Tunbridge Wells of course they've got something to play for now there's only a goal in it and, uh, and they're looking at this thinking well you know if they walk away from this with a draw they've had a major result for a Tuesday night yeah. isn't it just yeah yeah, yeah. it remains uh, 2-1 but Silly, silly goals can see by Arif Town, and we just need to see, uh, just to s- try and see this game out. 2 1. A uh, sh- shot on the turn there by, was looked like uh, Ollie Milton. It was Ollie Milton. Ollie Milton. 
the bad back did specialist. Did well to hold off the defender and uh, swiveled the ball in a very nice uh, Ian Rush style. Ian Rush style, deflected um, wide for a corner, which James Dyer is now going to take from the right hand side. We can hear a come on you Reds cheer, not sure who that's from. Curled in towards the goalkeeper, but free header by Tamra Jules to get it out. It's um, disappointing there. It would have been nice to have seen a bit of a challenge and now Tamra Jules get the ball out. Great chance by Lee Milton. Corner's good by James Dyer, but no one on the end of it. 2-1 to the home side. He's so good at just... We're, we're, uh, we're, 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 we're commenting on the ability of Carnegie. We think has improved his squad massively since he's been here. Yeah, he has. And, uh, and a definite shout-out for Barrow of the Month, to be fair. Yeah, he's, he's a top, top player for me. Oh! oh. Dyer with a corner from the right-hand side there. It bounces around the penalty area a little bit. Lands to the feet of Ollie Milton, who just hits it over the bar. But, yeah, no, for me, Harrison Carnegie's been the unsung hero this month. I think he's been brilliant. A mistake in the middle there by Milo. Sees Tunbridge Wells break down on the right-hand side. Just literally right next to the linesman. And uh, who's that? Is that Teddy Green who does well to uh, to, keep, to get that out? Yeah, well. He for, marshaled his man well. Marshaled that he did. <laughs> <laughs> that he did. And now they're throwing in the right-hand side. He's thrown into the Otan box and cleared well nicely there. Um, Tum Tumbridge Wells trying to keep the pressure on Irith, but we're dealing with it very well. Nice ball played forward by Milo towards Dyer, who's just intercepted by the goalkeeper. Oh, but it's cut out by Dyer. The keeper's about... Oh, Dyer's had a shot from distance. Oh, I think I got a bit too enthusiastic there. That was just like a really aggressive back pass in the end. But we saw the idea. <laughs> Unlucky Dyer. Well saved, keeper. Remains 2-1. Not too much longer to go now, but we're just commenting that it's uh, it's going a little bit flat. Oh, oh, there's oh no, and there's a mistake by, the by JJ. Uh, the ball's gone through yeah. to Tunbridge Wells. This is trouble. Plays it across goal. Oh, Mackenzie Foley with a great oh, double oh, save. Great double save. The guys have a lot of trouble. Oh, do you know what? There are times when you need someone to step up. <laughs> And that man is Mackenzie Foley. You know, you know the song Proud by M People. What have you done today to make you feel proud? Well, Mackenzie, you've pulled off a double save. Yep. The fan club are not interested in any more of these comments, so I will move on. What a uh, save. Yeah, it was a save. I think, I think you saved one of them with, uh, with his nevers because he's on the floor clutching them like uh, what he was. He's now up. And yeah, he's definitely on a good feel down there to make sure that it's all working. Uh, still there, hanging on. Yeah. <laughs> but basically a mistake at the back, as we were just saying there by JJ. His ball's played out wide, cut across goal, and you know the, the centre forward from Tunbridge Wells has got the whole goal to aim at, pretty much. But then there was a big Patrick from SpongeBob shaping the way. <laughs> there was. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, what a burn! He just said was robbing goal. It's a bit harsh. Never, never mind. Anyway, cliche, Chris. How do we think he's going? <laughs> As I said, 2 0 is a dangerous scoreline. Unless we can get this third. No. Um, yeah, you hope there's no uh, sting in the tower this game. That's all I'm going to say. You know, We're not really performing particularly well. We're not really winning the battles. I'm not saying Tunbridge are a class above us or anything, but I think they've been... There's been a bit more energy about them second half and they've managed to get that goal. So they've, they're, they're fighting for trying to get a draw here. So I'm just hoping we hold on or try and get this third. Yeah, absolutely. Not too much longer to go now. Um, time is slowly ticking away and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the sooner they blow this final whistle, the better for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ollie Milton's taking a bit of a pace in as he went for attack there and he's rolling around on the floor because he knows he's getting a card as soon as he gets up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what reminds me as well? You know, in, um, you know there's that funny video of the bloke who's in goal and every time like, they have a shot, the ball hits him in the face yeah. and then it hits him in the face again and when he tries to sit down, it hits him and knocks him off the chair. That reminds me of Ollie Milton tonight. Every time he seems to have done anything, he seems to have got hurt. Yeah, but, you know, you have them sort of games, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. 2-1. Not long to go now. I'd say about 90 seconds from that quick look at that um, referee. Was that 48? 35. So, yeah, about 90 seconds to go now. Tunbridge Wells getting the ball by the right-back position on the attack, trying to bring it to the halfway line. Score a goal. Yep. Oh, and a poor pass James by Tunbridge. He's played out by Harrison Carnegie, who's doing superbly well on that right-hand oh, yeah. side to, to win it. Looks like it's about to go out for an ear of a uh, Tunbridge Wells throw, but it's kept in. Very, very, uh, little bit of a hot and cold second half, but hopefully, you know, just under 60 seconds to go left of the game, it should be job done. It should be, shouldn't it? 
Yeah, it should be. I'm just watching Ollie Milton take it into the corner there. See the ball out. Uh, see, the, see the time out. And he's been fouled. It's a foul. There's a foul. There's, there is, Definitely a foul. There is quite a clear foul there by Tunbridge Wells, but the ref decides uh, referee, to give the throw instead. Which I, I think the ref wants to see this game finish as much as everybody else does. Yeah, we've got about 30 seconds left now. He's bringing it up to the halfway line, the Tunbridge Wells player, and he's probably just going to do a nice big hoof into the box. No, he's dri- now he's dribbling. The, the defender's now dribbling, plays it out wide to the seven on the left-hand side, who tries to cut back inside, but Harry Taylor superbly there. Man of the match there. Yeah, it was a great moment there from the number 10. They can't, it really can't be that much longer to go now. The referee looks at his watch. There it is. There it is. Full Yay! time. And the Dockers are victorious. Do you know what? The first half, it was all here if Tan, and we dominated completely. Second half, this call as is, Tunbridge Wells were backing it and gave us a bit of a scare. But three points to Irith Town. We're back, back, or it's not even back, we're still in the hunt for those playoff places and the non-league fixture is this Saturday against Whitstable Town. Yeah, non-league day. If you've got a season ticket for a Premier League or Football League club, get yourself down here. Cheap ins, uh, kids for free. Uh, come, come and watch a great team play football. Absolutely. And Eriff as well. Hey! I'm joking. I'm joking before anyone says anything. What do you think of that, Chris? Uh, job done in it, 2-1. Um, yeah, it's all on to the weekend now and hashtag 300. Hashtag target 300, absolutely. We'll be catching up with Adam Woodward after these words. And once again, fantastic for a 10 to get three points. Rob on 3-1-2-3. Up the Dockers. We're with Dockers manager Adam Woodward after a 2-1 win over Tunbridge Wells this evening. Woody, what are your thoughts? It wasn't pretty. Second half wasn't good enough. But it's just a... After Saturday, obviously, we could have... Um, Saturday was hurt us and took a lot out of us um, to concede the way we did in the last minute, the last kick of the game. Um, we could have turned up here tonight and had a little bit of a hangover. But, listen, fair play. We've got the win, which is important. Um, and I think that's it, really. I think turned up, won the game, eat the hot dogs and go home. Uh, first half, good enough. A great goal by James Dyer. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, he's, um, he's an exceptional player. An exceptional player. I thought off the ball, he was really good tonight. Um, he took his goal well, but listen, I don't think we was 2-0 to the good, to be honest. I think we had an early chance if Harry, was it when the ball came back and Aaron Keeper made a good save, but I think first half, it was just, we was quite, um, it was comfortable winning 2-0, but it wasn't a, really a 2-0, if I'm honest. I think they, we um, was quite lucky to go in at that scoreline. Uh, 